About a month ago, this device, the Oppo A96, was launched and the tagline for it was a perfect choice, signifying that it is a perfect device. But is it? In this video, we're going to be going through everything that there is to know about this guy and all of my observations from the few weeks that I've been using it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Be sure to hit that like button so more people can benefit from the review of this device that we're about to share here. All right, that's enough talk. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting with the unboxing, the items that come in the box are just about everything you would expect. Once you take out all the packaging and open the box, the first thing you see is the case that contains the SIM ejector tool, the safety guide, booklets, and of course, the silicone uh, phone case. The next thing in the box is the device itself in its pretty interesting design, which we'll get to in a bit. At the very bottom of the box is where you get the 33 watt fast charging brick and the type C USB cord. I have to say that when it comes to the physical appearance, uh, the importance of a good looking device was not lost on Oppo at all. The Oppo A96 comes in a very interesting design. This sunset blue color that I got the device in has a pretty nice twist to it with how it handles light in a nice blend of gold and blue colors on its back. And I was impressed by this design. Everywhere you turn, uh, as light reflects on it, it changes color. Now, away from the looks, I was also impressed by how this device felt in my hands. For a mid-range device with a plastic frame and back, it feels pretty solid. Oppo claims that uh, the materials used here to design the A96 is scratch resistant and it can handle whatever situation is thrown at it. If you would like me to test that out, you can leave comments below and uh, I might just do that on Instagram, who knows. So uh, if I get enough comments to test the scratch resistance, uh, we'll do that over at Instagram. So do follow me, the handles will be right there. As for the durability of the device, while it might not be the most premium material on a smartphone, it does not feel like you're holding a piece of cheap plastic though. I really like the level of attention to detail that is paid on the build and design of this device to ensure that consumers get a relatively premium feel to their smartphone without necessarily overspending. Also, I think it's solid enough to withstand certain levels of impacts and drop heights. On the body of the A96, you get all the standard features that you would normally expect, a 3.5mm headphone jack, a microphone, USB, uh, Type-C charging port, speaker grills located at the bottom of the device. You also get a front-facing speaker on top of that screen that offers you dual listening or dual speaker listening experience and a small hole punch selfie camera. On the left side, you get the SIM tray and the volume rockers. It's a dual SIM with the micro SD card slot. On the right side is where you get the power button uh, that doubles as the fingerprint reader. Uh, at the top of the device, you get another mic, and on the back, you get a dual camera setup, which we'll be getting to in a bit. It's also interesting to see how the camera bump looks like. It's of course not too big, but it's not too small either. As the bow to tie all of these features together, the Oppo A96 has IP5X dust proof rating and an IPX4 water resistant rating. Couple this with its scratch resistance and durable build, you have quite the rugged device in sort of a slim package right here. Everything looks, you know, pretty well done on this device. However, I had a couple of instances where my hand covered the bottom facing speaker as I played games. So, um, you can take note of that and you know if you're also watching videos as well still though design wise i think the device was well thought out and it's a great addition to the already competitive the already highly competitive market for mid-range smartphones the display of the a96 is an ips lcd screen with a maximum refresh rate of 90 hertz and a resolution of 1080 by 2412 at 6.95 inches the screen comes with a slim bezel and a screen to body ratio of 84% and 401 pixel density. Considering the level of innovation and tech that has gone into smartphones in this mid-range category, I think that having an LCD screen on here was a bit of a letdown. While the viewing and usage experience, you know, uh, of this device is not bad at all, I did feel the difference between using the LCD display of the Oppo A96 compared to other devices with AMOLED displays. Furthermore, I also noticed that the device does not allow you to stream uh, YouTube content in 4K. So no matter the resolution of a video you're watching, you have it all capped at 1080p. On its own, however, the display is well optimized for its LCD screen with how it handles contrast, colors, and everything in between. While we don't get an AMOLED screen, Oppo does offer pretty 
decent brightness on this device. Naturally, the Oppo A96 is designed to have a native max brightness of 480 nits, which is pretty bright, but you still get to set the brightness to be as high as possible. Uh, that, re that reportedly extends the brightness to an even higher 600 nits. At this level of brightness, you don't have to worry much about not being able to use your phone in direct sunlight. But you should watch your battery though. It says high consumption there. After watching a couple of videos on this device, I can say that uh, it does a decent satisfactory job. But then again, when I turned 22, I think, you know, an AMOLED display would have sufficed. But yeah, uh, LCD is not so bad. Let us now look at the performance features of the Oppo A96. On paper, the Oppo A96 offers a Qualcomm Snapdragon 680 4G chipset coupled with Adreno 610 GPU that runs on Android 11 and Oppo's Color OS 11.1. It also comes with 8 gigs of RAM and an internal storage of 128 or 256 gigabytes. The unit that was sent to me came with an internal storage of 256 gigabytes. These are pretty decent numbers for a mid-range device and also when you compare it to other devices in its price region. While they are not the wildest performance specs you'll see today, 8 gigs of RAM is quite a lot and it's bound to give you just about everything that you need in terms of multitasking and high performance. The Oppo A96 also comes with an expandable RAM that draws power from some of the internal storage when needed. Uh, this is an interesting extra feature to have if you really intend to push the device to certain extremes. I put the Oppo A96 to the test playing games and running different apps and the phone held up really well. I wasn't really sure what to expect with gaming on this device but I definitely enjoyed playing games. The one area I think suffered a tiny bit was graphics. For the graphics of the game they were not as crystal clear as I would have wanted them and when I played Call of Duty it went straight to medium graphics by default. I did try to play at high graphic settings and medium frame rate and uh, it still performed nicely. When I tried moving the high frame rate on Call of Duty the graphics automatically changed to low. So that is to say you can only use high frame rates uh, on low graphics with this device. The Oppo A96 doesn't have to be the fastest device but if you are in the market for a device that gives you a satisfactory gaming experience without having to spend your life savings, the A96 should definitely be on your list. As a side note though, I can't say how constant heavy usage would affect the performance of this device after a long time. I did notice that the device began to get a little warm to the touch after about an hour of constant gaming, you know, heavy usage. I have to admit though that I put the device through a lot of stress going from one graphics intensive game to the next graphic intensive game. Speaking of gaming, the Oppo A96 also comes with Game Assistant, the feature that helps you optimize your gaming experience to the fullest. The feature is both useful for optimizing the processing power of your device for games and also ensuring that you have an uninterrupted gaming session by muting calls if you have you know, the feature turned on and it would limit uh, the background usage, background network usage. So you can mute notifications, can customize different options for what the game assistant does whenever you are gaming. The assistant is triggered automatically once you open the, um, the game and you can also slide from the left side of the screen. The battery capacity of this device is one feature that certainly gave me a shock somewhat. The battery of the Oppo A96 is 5000 mAh. Generally, 5000 mAh is already a lot of battery, but it is even more shocking how Oppo managed to fit that into a device that is just 6.47 inches tall and uh, 191 grams in weight. In reality, I have to say that this battery is definitely as big as Oppo says it is. The battery of the Oppo A96 lasted me more than a day on full charge. In fact, it was almost a challenge to kill this battery. I ran benchmark apps, I played games, watched videos, and I even let this video play YouTube videos one after the other in full brightness with the flashlight on. It was just hard to kill this battery. I don't know how much of a heavy user you are, but I do think it's safe to say that you should be comfortable going out uh, without the charger or worse, maybe going out without the power bank maybe uh, with the battery performance of the Oppo A96. Unless you are always on your phone and you're using uh, things like mobile hotspots or mobile data and running heavy applications, this phone should serve you for the entire day and even more on a full charge. 
So maybe you can take your power bank if you are going on like two days uh, of only using the Oppo A96 on battery usage, but the battery was good. As far as charging though, Oppo says that it's 33 watt super Vogue fast charger, you know, the one that comes in the box should take you from zero to 50% in 26 minutes. Well, we did not fail to test it for ourselves in the studio here. And the results were quite interesting. First off, after the device died, I plugged it in uh, and it started by itself after a few minutes of charging. In the first 10 minutes of charging, uh, the device went from zero to 20%, which uh, I had pretty high hopes for how it would perform, but it began to slow down after getting to just about 48%, which was after 30 minutes of charging. The device finally got to a full charge after just over one hour of charging it with the 33 watt fast charger. So it was like one hour and 10 minutes. While you would expect it to charge faster, there are a couple of things to consider. First off, this is a very big battery on here for a 33 watt charger. It's a pretty decent charging speed too, but furthermore, with the 48% that uh, the 30 minutes of charging gives you, you can be confident that it will last you long enough without dying, you know, with your average usage. Also, normally your charging speed depends on the current, the voltage, the power capability, and where you are might be different. It may not always give you the same results, like my own results every single time. So take this as sort of an average from my tests and also from Oppo's tests. Now, for those who are only concerned, uh, mostly concerned about the cameras of their smartphone, I think the Oppo A96 does a good job in terms of photography. The two cameras on the back of this device are designed to serve two different purposes. The main camera is a 50 megapixel camera, while the second camera is a two megapixel camera dedicated to the portrait mode of this device. The small hole punched to the left of the screen is a 16 megapixel front facing camera. In order to access the 50 megapixel settings, you actually need to go to the more section in the camera menu and click on extra HD. These days, the camera performance of a smartphone is more than just how many uh, how many megapixels it has or how many pixels the brand has squeezed into the small sensors. Without proper attention to computational photography and processing, you'll have a device with a 60 megapixel camera that cannot produce good photos. Thankfully, this is not the case with the Oppo A96. Despite it being a mid-range device, there is obviously some effort in ensuring that the post-processing done in camera produces good looking pictures. While it may not win an award as the best in the world, you know, in terms of photography, it does a decent job, especially when you compare it to other mid-range devices that I have had the opportunity to test out. First things first, the selfie. I found the selfie quality to be very sharp in good lighting, good lighting being the operating word here. Once it's bright enough, you should get, you know, consistent results. And in dimmer light, you may not retain some of that sharpness, but it's still sharp. Now, in comparison to portrait mode, uh, when you put the selfie of the normal shot with portrait mode side by side, again, I had no complaints. It would simply blur the background, whether it's the background is even close to you and try to separate it from you as smoothly as possible, thanks to the extra two megapixel camera. The A96 doesn't necessarily have a macro mode, but if you zoom in a lot, you should definitely get a decent magnified shot that can be creative looking. Taking portrait shots with the rear camera is nearly perfect, except for a few blur leaks around the subject, which may or may not, you know, you may not be able to tell from afar. However, it's still a smooth blur effect that it adds to uh, the, the, the photos to separate you from the background, as well as the videos. You can go from 1x on the back camera up to 2x, 5x, and a max of 10x. I did also like how it preserves text. For instance, here is me going from 1x all the way to 10x and I can legibly read the font, albeit a digital zoom. You have to appreciate the processing power on here. Now, I also tested to see if I could explore macro with the zoom, uh, just like I mentioned earlier. You can go really, really close to capture as much detail and, and it will come out as clear as possible. Almost with the natural saturation and color in real life. The device does capture a lot of detail with its 50 megapixel sensor uh, in the clouds as well and with text and texture. It's also quite true to life, which is something, again, it's just something you benefit from. For the night shots, I simply compared the normal shot to the night mode. These two images were shot at the same time. The one on the right was shot in night mode and it brightens the photo quite a lot to a very considerable extent. In fact, to some, it might be what they're looking for in a night shot, but to some, they probably just want a more natural look. When it comes to the front facing video now, I found the same thing that applies to photos applying to videos here as well. The brighter it is in your environment, the clearer your shots will be. And this sample also looked fair. Now the back camera does deliver the same amount of quality you will get with that sensor 
First off, it can only shoot in 1080p and 720p. And this is what the 1080p footage looks like. It's good. Uh, we tested it on the road. We tested it in areas with plants and it looked fair. We tested it with meta. We tested it with random structure. One thing to note is that you can go from 1x to 10x with the zoom on video. It's just the same way you can with pictures. And I really like the background blur you know, and it's consistent sharpness. I guess that's what you would get when you have a lens that helps you. As for securing your device now, the Oppo A96 comes with the standard three options of password or pattern, face unlock, and fingerprint unlock. All of these worked fine, and I did not have any complaints at all. The fingerprint sensor is locked on the side of the device where the power button is, you know, the power button is the fingerprint uh, button. I found the fingerprint button to be quite responsive than most that I have tried out. Usually having the fingerprint reader on the power button can be a gamble considering how thin the button is with also accidental touches that may be happening a lot. Aside from that, it performed really well and I like it there because it's just the power button and it unlocks your phone. You would inevitably press the power button anyway. As for the face unlock, it is hard to decide which was more impressive, its reaction speed or how quick uh, it was to set up. It literally took me 30 seconds to set up the face unlock feature. I didn't want to get my hopes up as a result of the quick setup, but the face unlock feature did not fail at any time. Now, in conclusion, I believe that the Oppo A96 is a good phone. It is not an overpriced device and still some of the features that have gone in here would easily compete with some flagship devices. While the device might have a couple of drawbacks, it manages to impress in many other departments and I think there is a good balance on both ends. One key thing that does it for me here is the battery life of the device. In fact, based on all you've seen in this video, if, if that is a deal maker for you, I would recommend it based on the battery capability. Let me know your own thoughts on the Oppo A96. Is there anything that I've missed or anything that you would like to know more about with this device? Leave your comments below in the comment section there and I'll be right there chatting with you guys. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Uh, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you will never miss any video I drop and you'll be the first to know when that goes live. So yeah, thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you guys in the very next video.